there's so much that you could actually get through with your message, like through a picture and through uh, like your description. But like, I think with the videos, um, it's such a great way to connect with your followers, with your audience. <laughs> joining us. Welcome on the back end of Zoom and welcome to, to uh, all of our lab coders who are on the Facebook who are joining us here today because this is going to be a fun one and I'm back. I haven't interviewed uh, Ryan and his, uh, his crew in a while and selfishly I wrote, wrote, raised my hand for this one because I want to be the one to get to ask the questions because I get to learn stuff. And uh, today, you guys know Ryan Garcon from, uh, from um, Very Social. Uh, we talk about Very Social a lot. I am a client. I love their platform. What they have done for organic growth on my Instagram has been absolutely amazing. So you guys know Ryan, but we've got Lance Pendleton here, who is the head of agent development for Compass Realty. And we are going to talk today about using psychology to elevate your social presence. And let me, let me just preface this, because I'm not going to say a whole hell of a lot here, because I'm going to let these guys talk, and I'm going to ask questions. Uh, there's a lot to the psychology behind social media and getting inside of your audience's head to gain engagement. So this is a really good one. So if you're here today, I applaud you. Thank you for being here. You're very wise for your business and for your social media. So with that said, welcome, my friends. Ryan, Lance, welcome to uh, Lab Code Agency. Hey, hey Jeff, how are you Lance, are you, are you standing up for this, Lance? I stand up for everything. Anytime I'm talking, I stand because if I sit, it's not never, it's never interesting. I feel like you're ready to go to battle right now. Let's do I, this. I'm I'm psyched. This is a this is a, an awesome break to my day. Awesome. Ryan, I'm gonna let you start, my friend. Yeah, sure. So um, you know, my name's Ryan Garson. Um, I'm an agent with Compass here in Manhattan. Um, I have a sales team of 10. Uh, we're going to do pretty crazy numbers this year. The market is really just nuts. Uh, so we're pretty much heading into like, it's honestly, I can't even, it's like blows my mind to say it, but the team, we might, we're probably going to do a hundred million dollars in sales this year. So it's been like bonkers. Um, but in addition to being a real estate team and managing my team, we, I also am the founder of Very Social. It's a social media agency that manages social media um, for real estate agents. We will help with, you know, you got work collaborating with you to create content. We'll um, create really engaging uh, Instagram stories for you. We'll work on your grid. Pretty much what we're going to do is take your um, social media and just bring it up a whole nother notch. And the reason why I started this business is because I was working with the social media manager and I was just so busy, you know, setting up tours, running comps, doing showings that I just didn't have the time, nor did I have the skill set to really, to really do social media well. So like working with somebody who was an expert at it and delegating that out was just like, it was pretty much common sense to me. And I'm like, you know what, I started selling real estate through social media. And then I'm like, you know what, I got to start a business for this. And so now, um, two years later, you know, we have close to 70 clients all over the country. Um, and uh, we're helping a lot of agents really just taking their social media to the next level. Um, so I wanted to bring Lance on. Um, he's a client of ours. And um, he is pretty much in charge of agent development over at Compass. So, you know, he, he, what he's an expert at is like really psychology for agents. And so I wanted to create this webinar to really talk about like the mindset of social media and being a real estate agent and posting. So we're really going to go through it. Lance, why don't you um, say a little bit about yourself and, um, you know, your experience with, with social media and real estate? Yeah, absolutely. So first of all, Ryan, uh, thank you to you and, and Jeff for having me on here. Um, again, my name is Lance Pendleton as the head of agent development for Compass. Uh, my job is to help our agents increase their GCI, grow their business. Um, but truthfully, you know, I used to be an agent many years ago. Prior to joining Compass, I was the chief innovation officer for the largest Sotheby's affiliate in the U.S. Um, and my background, though, is in behavioral psychology. And that's a lot of what I bring into a lot of the work that I do. 
Um, and I teach humanistic behaviorism, right? So, which is really the art of understanding of how do I deepen relationships with people to increase my connections, to have a better, healthier business where I feel better about myself and I'm working smarter and not harder. So I'm not constantly trying to be all things to all people at all times. And because of that, you know, my experience within social media is social media when used poorly, Ryan, as you know, uh, is something that becomes uh, very, very fractured, right? It can be something in which people are, are just trying to get stuff for the sake of stuff out into the world. Um, and when used well, I think it's an incredibly powerful tool to allow people to understand who you are as a person, get to know you a little bit better, but most importantly, allow them to better connect to what they're going to feel like when they work with you. So that's why I really appreciated that, and particularly the work that Ryan, uh, you and your team have done to improve my social media and, and my connection to people as well, too. So, yeah, and I, I think, Ryan, Ryan yeah. can I say a couple things real quick? Yeah, yeah, go for it. First of all, Lance, what's that on your shirt? Compass logo. Very cool. I wasn't sure if that was like, a, you know, like trying to show how slim the latest iPad is or something like that. <laughs> no. <laughs> Very cool. Awesome. Um, and I, I want to say one thing too, before Ryan, you get into this, um, because, and I'll say this throughout the, throughout the webinar, uh, but very social, which is the spawn, you know, the, the reason we're having this is offering a new LCA promotion for the webinar attendees. So if you're on this, uh, go into the chat, look at the link there, read what Jake put in there, uh, but they're offering a free reel. They're going to create a reel for you and customized for you. I think it's for the first five people uh, that go click that link and put their information in. So I'm throwing that out there uh, for some of you. Maybe it's a wait and see. We'll see if, you know, Ryan and Lance can bring you some heat for others. You might just want to jump on that real quick here. So, um, Ryan, I, I wanted to throw that in there and I'll say it again throughout the webinar. Yes. Awesome. Thanks. Yes. Take advantage of it, guys. It's all about video right now. Um, I can't say it enough. If you go on my uh, Instagram, you should really check it out. Um, it's all video. Um, and um, I think that like when I took over Lance's uh, Instagram, you know, that's what I pushed him for because he's so articulate and he has such a wealth of knowledge that I'm like, you need to be pushing these videos out, like really letting people know, um, you know, know like what your value is. And, and you know, there's so much that you can there's so much that you could actually get through with your message, like through a picture and through uh, like your description. But like, I think with the videos, um, it's such a great way to connect with your followers, with your audience. Um, so definitely like reach out to us. We can help you with your reels. Like, you know, very social is just all about, you know, collaborating with you to elevate your, your social media. And so part of that is just like our monthly strategy sessions. You know, we're, we try to work a month in advance um, because we need to plan for this. And, um, you know, just being on top of the trends and what's going on. And now it's like, we're end of summer, we're going into fall. So like our mindset is like, what's the fall trends? Like, and we're really, we're, we're working with our clients that build strategies for the fall. And I'll tell you one thing, it's all about video. So I, I would say, like, I think I wanna just throw this over to Lance. You know, the one thing that I, uh, that we probably get from a lot of our clients is like, oh, video, like, are people gonna like what I put out there? You know, like, what do you think the psychology is, Lance, be behind like, you know, actually like, stepping up and like doing the work and like making these videos and then posting it. Well, I, you know, I, I think there's two ways to think about this, right? Um, it, it's really more of a time money conundrum, right? How much time should I be investing into something for what is the return on investment that I'm going to get on that, right? And I think that people are far more for, forgiving in the world to the production quality and the value and the lighting and all that other stuff versus how much better you are at quickly humanizing and engaging with someone and providing them something of value or interest, right? In a very quick sound bite in a smaller way. So I could do an hour long workshop, right? On, on demonstrating your value to future clients, right? And that would be great. Or I could do a 90 second or less quick tip on one thing you can do right now that's gonna demonstrate better value to your clients, right? I'm going to get 100 people that might show up, show up or sign up for that hour-long seminar, but I'm going to get 7,000 people to watch a 90-second clip, right? And that allows someone to then understand from my perspective a little bit of something about me, what I can offer, what I can do, and brings them into my world a little bit. 
but allows them to also feel like they can do it pretty quickly and get a good understanding of what I'm all about without me having to go spend a lot of time, effort, energy, and money, right? So again, I think that's the thing is from a psychological standpoint is understanding, am I thinking about something in the, I need to make something perfect before I do, right? It's really the art of procrastination, truthfully, versus can I do something short, simple, and quick that is going to allow people to understand and allow people to build a, an, an essence of trust with me. Ryan, can you go back to that previous slide for a second? I, I want to add something to that. Look, look at that quote. Like, and, and it says that doing the same things you're doing in your mass email marketing and just dumping it right into your social strategy is a bad idea. Also, doing what everyone else is doing is also a bad idea. There's zero differentiation. Uh, so, you know, this, that goes back into the psychology of all of this stuff. Social media is so freaking diluted that your, and I'd like to get your guys' opinion on this because when it comes to psychology, believe me, I've put a lot of thought into this and I, you know this, Ryan, I do a lot with social media. That your client, your target audience is not a realtor. They're not in the real estate industry. They're not going there for the same reasons you're going there. They're not seeing the same things you're seeing when they go to social media. So if you don't put yourself in the mind of your consumer and realize that they're opening up their social media platforms for mindless content, to kill time, to be entertained, if you don't understand that and you don't give them what they want, you're never going to show up on their feed. So all that really cool stuff that Lance is going to teach you is irrelevant and is, and is going to fall on deaf eyeballs, deaf, deaf ears, all of the above, right? Um, and so I just wanted to throw that in there because I love the psychology of social media. Lance, you want me to go ahead uh, to that? Let's. I, I want yeah. you to talk about this right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just along those lines, just in, in some of the stuff that I teach people, look, the industry has been has been uh, unfortunately many years ago filled with carnival barkers in in the coaching world. And I'm I'm not a coach. I don't typically believe in traditional coaching. Um, but you know, it was filled with people who watched how agents were engaging with people and real estate is engagement of email. So what were people doing and what have they been emailing people? Ready? My open house, my just sold, my new listing, the hot new color to paint your front door in spring, my newsletter. By the way, here's another month, my newsletter. Oops, did you get my newsletter? Here's another newsletter, right? We have inundated people and barraged them with a bunch of crap that nobody really actually cares about. Now, with that being said, what happened in that idea is we lost the ability to build and negotiate trust. And in that, when you've got 2.5 million agents in the world that are all dumping out the same content, yeah, you now have a separate problem. The goal here is not to stay top of mind. We've all heard of 32 touches, but let's do this in reality. If I showed up, Ryan, at your door 32 times a year and rang your doorbell and said, hey, how are you? I'm here. Hi. Like, how long before you got a restraining order on me? <laughs> I mean, right? Time. right, exactly. The, the fourth time you'd have a shotgun, but yet we do that to everybody all day long with a bunch of crap that no one really cares about. That is what is really uh, us. It's, it's digital harassment, right? And what I talk about is the idea of building mindshare. What is mindshare? Mindshare is really about trust. Mindshare is that when you connect with someone originally and early on in a conversation in a meaningful way, they trust you more. As time progresses, if you're not retouching them in a way that allows them to understand the quality and value of you, that mindshare denigrates. So a lot to what Jay was just saying of like, are we just pumping out stuff for the sake of stuff? That's a problem. So what happened was all these folks in the carnival barker world said, hey, everyone, you got to be on social media like you're going to get old and move back in your parents basement and have a thousand cats if you're not on social media. Right. Like go be on social media. And so what happened was nobody told agents how to be on social media. So what did agents do? Go ahead. You can show them one of my favorite slides. They took all the behaviors they had. Right. And they took all the email behaviors. Just jump back one for me all those email behaviors, and they just moved all that horrible behavior right into social media. So this is a statistic that shows you social media posts per industry per week. Now, we put out more stuff than marketing companies do, and it's their job to market things, right? So what they did was they took all these posts and they said, okay, let's analyze the interactions with these posts. So same week, same number of posts, right? What was the level of engagement? That means someone liked it, commented, forwarded it, watched more than 10 seconds of video. Go ahead, Ryan. Clearly, as you can tell, nobody cares about the stuff that we just churn and pump out. Why? Because this is what we've just been talking about. We've lost mindshare because we've tried to stay top of mind with market stats and my open house. And it's like, that's just garbage. It's literally just garbage. So 
What I'm trying to help you all understand is that, again, what are top of mind things, and Ryan's the professional at this, not me, and that's why I turned over my social media to them, is the idea of how do you begin to better mind share with people to allow them to understand the human side of who you are and what you do? Because I tell you right now, I'd rather be me on the internet and have 50 people love who I am and really feel comfortable and go, I'd love to work with that guy, right? Then have 200 people go into crappy relationships with me. Why? 50 people that like who I am, I'm going to have healthy relationships with them. They're going to give me a ton more referrals and like-minded people refer you to like-minded people. They hang out in similar circles. Crappy people hang out with other crappy people. They're not really going to like you. You're not going to get as many referrals. And if they ever did, it's not going to be the same level of referral. You've got other crappy people you're dealing with. So this is a real easy way to begin to understand the idea that what we're trying to do is initiate and build trust with people in a digital format. And that's kind of what, you know, Ryan and his team at Very Social are, are experts at. Totally. Totally. Yeah. I mean, it's it, just kind of going back to bad social media. You know, um, I, I think it really needs to be like 70, 30, you know, 70 lifestyle, 30 percent um, you know, personal, um, or sorry, 70% lifestyle and 30% real estate, if that. And even when you're posting the real estate content, like it needs to be engaging. Like, I, I know you always make fun of like the open house uh, in feed posts. Like, you know, no one, none of your followers, again, look at who your audience is. Like they don't want, they're not gonna be going to one of your open houses because you posted on, on, on your Instagram, you know, know who your audience is um, because, you know, you need to create content towards your audience. Like it, it, this, what you post is not about you. It's about who's following you, who, who your audience is. So you really need to, you know, tailor your strategy to mind share with them, to connect with them. Love that. that you know, you know what I always call it? I, I call it my personal reality TV show on social media, because that's really what it is. It is your own reality TV show. And if you're not into sharing your life, that's okay. Figure out what you can share of value. I mean, you saw that, that data. What did, it, what did it, sh it say? It said that it was, it was like charitable type stuff. That's what they consume. Uh, so first of all, like that's an eye opener to me. It means I really should get behind something that I believe in and really go all in on that and make that a pillar of my content. Bam, I'm going to get a ton of engagement. I'm giving back to my community. I'm doing good things. People are going to engage it. But even if you're not, just figure out what it is that your community wants. What do they want? They want to know what's going on in the community. You know, I mean, it's like, it's, it's um, I don't know. It, I love this conversation because it's, it's you guys get it. Most don't. And, you know, hopefully that there's going to be a few people on here that jump at this. And Ryan, you say 70, 30, I say 80, 20, maybe even 85. Yeah, I, you're right. Yeah, I agree. I think it's just a feeling, you know, it's, it's just a feeling. And, um, you know, it's knowing who you are, you know, we like to call it our pillars of content. You know, like I have my pillars, like I'm a real estate agent, obviously, but I'm a husband, I'm a father, I'm into social media. I'm, I'm into my city. I love New York city. You'll see a ton of New York city content. Like that's my community. I'm into food. You'll see some of my bagel reviews. I'm into fashion. Um, so like, those are my pillars and then I'm strategic. Like, how am I going to create content? How am I going to create videos? What kind of pictures am I going to take? Am I going to do work with a lifestyle photographer? So, you know, that, I think this slide that I have here is really, it's really educational. I, I love how it's put together. Like tell a story, you know, that's what Instagram stories are for. You know, like I love the, the three slide story, you know, a picture, a video, a picture, you know, use your stories to tell a story. So you can mind share. Okay, I'll keep on going. So then what does that do? That story, hopefully it leads to a conversation, you know, an engagement. Like I, I'm, I'm, I, I, like I look at my statistics every single month. I'm talking to 200 people. I have 200 conversations going on a month, you know? So it's like people are, 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 are DMing me about like, a, a video I did with my daughter or today's national dog day. You know, I, I posted about that, you know, like knowing the holidays, knowing the seasons, you know, knowing your pillars, like sparking a call, uh, a conversation, you know, sharing knowledge. Like, how are you, how are you there to help people? Like being the expert and then just spreading joy, being positive. Um, you know, I think these, this is a really great slide of like, kind of like 
quickly, like how, how you should, your mindset should be towards social media. 100%. Yeah. Um, and, you know, kind of just going off like what, what, like, you know, not just real estate. Like I do these bagel reviews. Um, I kind of got the idea of Dave Port and I with his uh, pizza reviews. And so I go, I feel like a bagel shop is like really, it's a community cake, a community based restaurant. So every, uh, every week or every other week, I'm going to a bagel store, I'm reviewing the bagel, I'm meeting the owner. Everyone's talking to me about bagel reviews, you know, um, just a simple picture in front of the bagel store, best bagels and coffee, nice picture of the bagel, you know, definitely um, having pictures of my family, some more foodie content. Um, I do, uh, and just like, you know, at the end, like team accomplishments, success stories, um, again, kind of going back. And I love how Lance says this, like, it's not top of mind. It's mind sharing because this kind of content connects, I, you know, I'm not promoting open house flyers. Like I'm, I'm promoting common interests that I know my followers have and creating that connection. Um, so they, they, you know, so the conversations continue. So when they, they do, when they are ready to like sell or they're in a conversation with somebody who's going to sell, like I'm, my name's going to be brought up. And, you know, Ryan, I just want to throw one thing in there to you because you just struck on something that I thought was really interesting. You know, think about the content that most folks put out there, right? Market data. Well, guess who else has market data? Google. Nobody really needs that, right? Sure. Is it interesting from time to time? Absolutely. But there are 2.8 million agents putting out what? Market data. Yeah. So it's like, I just, the idea that you have posts on here that allow me to understand who you are and recognize that if I was thinking of getting information from you, if I wanted to engage with you in something, you look like somebody that I'd actually want to go have a beer with. You look like somebody that, I'd, that would understand what my family and life needs might be, Right. You, you look like somebody that clearly knows where to buy matching outfits. Like these are things that for me, like, again, your presence to me on this tells me that you're safe, you're comfortable and you're reliable. That's what I like in somebody that I want to work with, right? Not just this barrage of stuff for the sake of stuff. Because again, remember how many agents does the average person know? Five, six. So what does that feed then look like when you've got five or six different people giving you the same stuff versus maybe Ryan giving you something different? Definitely. And I mean, kind of going back to my pillars, like these are some of my, like, this is typical posts for me, bagel reviews, family posts. I love my city, food with friends, team accomplishment. So I guess Jeff was right. It's 20% real estate, you know, but I lead, I lead up to it. I build the momentum. I get them into my like reality TV show. And then, you know, I kind of like, it's a, you know, I throw in a little like real estate, part. like, but that's why I'm putting all like the time and energy um, to, you know, create the content. And with the, like, with still just that mind share at the very end, like I have a team accomplishment, I'm doing this in real estate, but I'm also like a real person that they want to hang out with. Because when you're working with real estate agents, you, it's a, it's a real, it's a very comfortable re relationship, especially when you're buying with them. It's like, go, it's like going shopping. You know, you said something, Ryan, too, though, when you said that you that you um, kind of mimicked what Dave Portnoy does. And, and I wanted to mention to to the audience, for those of you that feel like either a OK, I'm, I'm a little bit uncomfortable because I don't know what to do or I don't know what to say or somebody's already doing it like none of us, almost really none of us other than like Gary Vayner, Vaynerchuk and people like that are original. We're all mimicking or emulating someone somewhere along the way and that's okay like take something that you see that you're that, that someone else is doing like ryan or anybody like who who is it that you are drawn to who is it that's showing up on your feed every single day that means you like their content because the algorithm is smarter than you are what are they doing well emulate that be who you want to be because remember and, and ryan i don't know if you guys talk about this much but Going viral on social media, especially Instagram, is really freaking hard. Growing a massive audience on Instagram is really freaking hard. So don't worry about the number of followers that you have. Focus on connecting with the ones that you do have. Because the reality is without social media, and, and Lance, you were just kind of talking about this to a certain degree, is 
you might, let's, you get into real estate. You've been in the business for five years. How many real referral partners do you potentially have in your SOI? You have your friends and your family. You might have some past customers. All in all, it's maybe a hundred people, right? That's it. So social media just makes it an exponential audience. So if you only have 500 followers on Instagram, that's actually really good. If you have 2000 friends on Facebook, that's actually really good. And that opens up the doors to more stuff. And that's why listening and paying attention to this stuff and executing on this stuff is so incredibly important because you got to understand how to play the game. And I, I always call it a game because I feel like it is a game. It's something you can't beat. It's like that game when you were a kid and you just can't ever get, you can't win, uh, but you just keep playing. And, um, and, and it can have, you know, unbelievable effects on your business. So carry on, Ryan. Jeff, I'll tell you one of my all-time favorite quotes. All wisdom is plagiarism. Only stupidity is original. I love that. You know, and again, when you think about this stuff, I love what you just said. If, if, if you can be the conduit in which you're taking things in life that you're learning and absorbing and taking and transferring them to other people and allowing other people to experience those things, that's what Mindshare is. That's how you build trust. That's a human connection and everything. Look, I mean, and again, I have no problem burying my kid neck deep, straight down in the dirt and then sand in this case and being like, you know what? This is what I do with my kids. Because you know why? It's funny to watch them try and get out of a hole. But for real though, like that is the type of thing that for me, I am I am always really, really, um, one, of my, one of my best things when I used to be an agent was I would post every Tuesday, my weekly parenting fail. Why? Because that's real, right? Like if anybody thinks that, you know, we're getting it right all the time, we're not. Like again, rehumanizing who we are goes a long way for people to feel a connection. Love that. Ryan, go back one slide for Kim. She wanted to take a screenshot real quick. I think that's the one she wanted. So grab that, Kim, real quick. We'll give you five, four, three, two, one. Moving on. Yeah. And, um, you know, just kind of talking about, um, you know, getting, you know, uh, plagiarism, I guess you could say. Like, I'm like, this is my business. Like, I'm a real estate agent and I'm a social media agency owner. So, like, I'm really on top of like what's going on and like who's doing what. I'm not going to, I'm the first one to admit it. Like Ryan Serhand is to me is unbelievable. Like, I feel like he just takes everything to the, to the next level. He's a trendsetter. Um, so I, I really, like, I, I kind of take a lot of the stuff that he does, but you wouldn't notice that. Like, I don't think you would, because that, that the thing is, it's like, it's me. It's not Ryan Serhand, you know? Um, you know, I might take an idea and put my spin on it. Um, and which is fine. And, and, and like, I might know that it's kind of like a Ryan Serhan idea, but it's like my, then it turns into my content. And, you know, when we're doing an audit, uh, with, with our clients, we're always like, you know, what social pages do you like? Like, that's important to us. Like, are you into like Josh Altman or Josh Flagg or, um, you know, like, who are you looking at? Gary V, um, Dave Port and I, like, you know, there's a lot of presence and like, I think what we try to do is, all right, we take like what, what these big personalities are and we take, you know, what our clients like strong points are and we mesh together to like create their own social media personality. Um, and I think it's, it's important because we're agents, we're salespeople, like we have big personalities, like that should come out on social media. Um, and, and I think it needs to be personal and it needs to be relatable. That's it, man. Um, and then another, it's what you put into it is what you get out. So, you know, when I get comments, I'm responding to my comments, but even more like, you know, like who, who do I like? I'm, I'm on there. I'm looking, you know, I'm spending time, but most importantly, I'm spending time to the people that, that I'm following, you know, and I'm engaging with them. Uh, if they get, you know, engaged, I'm congratulating them. If they go to a nice restaurant, I'm like, oh, how was it? I want to go. You know, if it's a birthday, if it's a, a success that they have, like I'm, I'm engaging with them and I'm supporting them. And then usually what happens in return organically, they're supporting me. So that's why I have, you know, 60, 70 comments um, on every one of my posts because, you know, I, I, what I'm putting in is, is I'm, I'm, I'm getting it back. And, and I'll tell you what, the best leads that I have are from my Instagram story DMs. Like I'm constantly in conversations with people, 200 conversations a month because I'm seeing what they're doing. Like it, 
what better way to kind of keep track to your past clients, to your friends, to your, your lead generators than keeping tabs of what they're doing on social media. And, and like people come up to me all the time and they're like, Oh, you're doing so great. Like, congratulations. Like, like, you know, I'm not like, I'm just, they're seeing what I'm doing. And again, only 20% of the stuff that I'm doing is real estate related. A lot of it is even more. So I think it's like, you know, what you put in, what you get out. So it's also on like, you know, not just like having very social, like do all the posting for you or you, you know, you gotta like, you gotta engage with your um, followers, with your friends, with your clients, like on social media too. And, and it'll come back to you, you know, like you need to like go viral, to get shares, to get more comments. Like it's not just going to come to you because you're who you are. Like you have to put it in the work. If I can comment on that too, it, so for anybody who's sitting here right now, because as Ryan said, I do use very social and I actually have a couple of VAs as well, and I still do probably 70% of my own content. Um, now that might be a little bit, you know, out of the stretch for some of you, but I will tell you right now from personal experience, you cannot have success on social media if you're not going to be engaged. It's just not going to work. This slide is perfect. Exactly what Ryan just said is 100% on point. If you do not engage every single comment and give people love and then go out and comment on other people that maybe didn't even comment on you, you, you just, you, you're basically just having, you're just having a good time. You're just having fun. There's, there's nothing else you're going to get out of it. You've got to play this portion of the game. Um. And then, you know, videos, 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 videos. Um, there's IG, IGTV, there's Reels, there's TikTok, there's YouTubes. I don't want to confuse everyone and, because there's Facebook, there's LinkedIn, there's so many different platforms. Um, but I think something that we're really doing because there are so many platforms is like we're taking some of these videos and we're cutting them up and just like using them differently for different platforms. Um, and there's different audiences on different platforms. Like a LinkedIn person is gonna vary much different than a TikTok or uh, Instagram. So I think you kind of have to like know your audience. I would, I would be on multiple platforms. You know, I think like if you wanna like be starter based, like, you know, Instagram and Facebook interconnect and usually your audiences are a little bit different. Uh, Facebook varies a little bit older, um, but like every time you post on Instagram, it could, you know, you could forward it over to your Facebook. And I think LinkedIn is really good. It's a different type of audience. Um, it's also a really great way to work with your, your lead connectors. Like, you know, I, I really like to have relationships with mortgage brokers, title insurance, real estate attorneys, um, interior designers, contractors. Like that's a great way for me to connect with those type of people because those, those professionals are a good lead source. Like they, they, I get a lot of referrals from that and other agents too. So it's like kind of like, using the same idea that you have, but just maybe putting a little bit of twist to the content so you can use it on other platforms. I totally agree. Uh, that, I mean, and I'll add to that and just tell all of you, my favorite platform is TikTok. I love it because of the technology piece of it. Um, I just so happen to have a lot of followers there, but I'm less concerned about that. I'm, I use it as my content creation piece so then I can cross post across all platforms. I do the same thing with Reels. Many times I'll create a Reel and I'll post it to TikTok, but I use TikTok and I'll, I'll post it to LinkedIn if it's relevant. I post them all to my YouTube shorts. I post them all to Facebook. I post them all to Instagram. Um, don't get the mindset of, well, I'm going to annoy my audience if I'm posting the same thing across multiple platforms, because the reality is the vast majority of your audience is only on one. So you are missing the boat if you have the, that mindset of I'm annoying them. And social media is the most non-invasive marketing that you can possibly do. You cannot post too much. Just ask the Gary V's of the world, the Frank Kearns of the world. They will tell you, you can't post too much. I promise you, they're posting double digit times a day. Lance, what kind of mindset would you say um, real estate agents should go into like creating videos, concepting the videos, like how do you think they should take that approach? Well, I mean, again, I go, I go back to kind of a little bit of what we started with and the concept of, you know, less is more. 
right? I think the, the typical reason that I see blockers happen from a behavioral standpoint is because an agent will think about doing this. They've heard everything y'all just said. They'll go to record something and think, I don't know, my hair's not right. I've got bags under my eyes or the lighting isn't good here, or I'm going to do this. Let me actually create a storyboard. Maybe I can get like, it becomes something where they talk themselves out of doing, again, the most minimal viable thing they could be doing, right? To just get some content out there that's stuff of interest. I always say the first step is to be able to post things where you don't feel you need to be presenting in it, right? I think, Ryan, you're super comfortable being on camera. I think you're super comfortable about being in front of the camera, talking to people and talking through a lens to connect with people. You know, there's nothing wrong for me to take on National Dog Day, uh, uh, you know, a video of my now 12-week-old puppy annoying the living hell out of his, you know, bigger brother, right? And posting that out there, you know, just to say, not happy National Dog Day. And, you know, it's, it's nice to see that I can also use this for siblings day or like whatever thing comes to the top of my head, right? Again, because it's part of my crazy life, right? Of them just messing with each other all day long. It, use the stuff that happens around you all the time to make it a little bit easier to, to leverage that. Because I think sometimes we get in our own head way too much uh, about what the perfect thing is. And, the, you know, remember, people are skimming through this in milliseconds of time. They're landing on things. They're, they're, they're just catching glimpses of information before they move on to something else, right? There's very few people that are sitting there and analyzing every frame and what your hair, was it in place or not? Like it's, that's not really a thing, right? I agree. Um, you know, I think also, you know, a lot of the clients that we talk to are just like, what should I post? And I, I think there's a lot of easy things that you could post. Like today's National Dog Day, you know, like Labor Day is coming up. The Jewish holidays are coming up, like really looking ahead and, and seeing what the holidays are. And there's like a lot of fun holidays, like National Ice Cream Day or like I Love My Sibling Day. You know, working off of those type of, of holidays, like you can create content, you can have fun with it. Kind of going back to Jeff's point is like, you know, uh, like, uh, like posting and getting your, your getting out there, like, you, you know, you don't want to get lost in the mix. There's so many different posts. So sometimes you have to, you have to have a strategy of maybe you want to post, you know, a lot. And so like, you know, these holidays, these seasons, like um, it gives you a reason to post and, you know, just, but being creative about it and strategic on how to create content based on, on, on the seasons. Anything else you guys got to add to that? No, I mean, I, I'm, I'm going to just throw you one thing to think about in this context, too, too, is that, you know, all of these things that we're talking about, right? Um, and I just saw Judy ask the question of what if you're single and, and have no kids, no pets? You know, those aren't your boring little life, right? The reality of it is, Judy, you know, I, I if you think about how what makes people connect, right? Let, let's get down to the basics. Like, why was social media started to begin with? It was designed by a bunch of really smart dudes and some nerds that wanted to be able to check in on their past girlfriends and see what was going on with them. Like it was never intended, right, to really take the form and shape on the whole that it has per se. What it has done and what it's become, though, has been this outlet um, for people to have a form of expression in certain things. You don't need to have all kinds of different, you know, deep things happening in your life to be able to share the parts of you that are interesting and compelling. Everybody has hobbies. Everybody has things they like, right? If you centralized on even something that was no greater than, I, I don't care if you're big into chocolate, let's use that as an example. You know, doing a post on what your favorite chocolate shop is, doing a post on what your favorite type of chocolate is, doing a post on what your favorite chocolate recipe and how to make chocolate at home is like, guess what? There are millions of people that love chocolate. And I don't even care that you're in real estate, but I'd watch that because I like chocolate too, right? Don't think that you have to have something so revolutionarily exciting. Remember, we are, you know, we're all much more similar than we believe we are. Yeah. So I, I always try and think about this idea of, am I overthinking this process? Am I trying to create something bigger than it needs to be? And how do I boil this down to something super simple that I can share that I really love? Because again, if I put something out there about chocolate, there's not a ton of people that are going to be commenting like, you suck, chocolate's stupid. Like, that's not a thing, right? You know, I put my political views out there. Yeah, I'm going to get that, right? There's a, it's just, a, it's a different space for you to be able to have people feel like they can get to know those things about you. And they, as Ryan say, will lean into you. And look, let's be super clear. I turn, you know, as, as you were hearing our co-host share that he deals with 70% of his social media. 
I turn almost 100% of my social media over to Ryan and his team. Why? Because I also know that for me, I want to spend the only time I spend on social commenting on things and talking to people about stuff, right? Rather than have to energize that sort of extensive creative process. And Ryan's team helps me once a month sit down and think, right? What's some of the creative stuff that I'm into that I'm thinking about that they can help me then utilize and get that out to people? Because, you know, with 22,000 Compass agents and, and, you know, all the other work that I do, it's like, I don't have time per se necessarily to go to the next level on a bunch of that stuff. So leverage and use the resources and the advantages that exist, because guess what? Remember, someone else is doing it really well. Why am I trying to reinvent that? I'd rather lean into their support and help to make my life and my job a lot easier. And then allow me to think of fun things like chocolate and be like, hey, Ryan, guess what? Find some cool stuff with chocolate, man, because here's a couple of things that I like about chocolate. And, you know, you guys help me out on this because they've been phenomenal with that. And I will say, you know, Lance says that he's pushed, puts 100 percent of his social media in our hands. You know, yeah, we do all the posting and, and manage it. But like it's a total collaboration between Lance and I, like Lance and our team, you know, like we're we still need the videos from him and the pictures and the content. Um, but like we're kind of guiding him on what he should be posting based on his pillars of content. And then he just gives us to us and we, you know, we'll edit the pictures, edit the videos, write the copy, use the hashtag, you know, help grow his, his followers. But this is a collaboration. Like we're not the type of agency that's just going to like snap our fingers and like make you a star on social media. It's what you put into it is what you're going to get. If you want to go the, the route of like, you know what, I want to lean into social media. I think that's going to be like my main strategy to like really grow my business, grow my brand. Like we're the type of agency that can help you get there and we'll do that together. But it's not like a light switch where we just click it on and then all of a sudden you have 10,000 followers and hundreds of comments. Like we're, we're doing this together, but the work that we do takes a ton of time. So like he has a dedicated social media manager that like has experience in like design and copywriting and then overall like our whole team we're experts in real estate like we have 60 real estate agents um that we manage so like we know the game we know the industry like nationwide and and each even though like some of the information and the like what we do is the same from like colorado to florida to new york it's based on you and we really gear each you know page and person to like have their own unique content. You know, I'm not Ryan Serhan, I'm Ryan Garson. Like I might take some of his strategies and they partner strategies, but like, you don't see people like calling me out on Instagram saying, oh, you're, you fraud, you're a Ryan Serhan wannabe. Like I'm Ryan Garson and I am my own brand. And like, I, 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 I've gotten there because I have the help of people that are experts in social media that have like gotten me there because I'm too freaking busy to do it myself. I'm selling freak a hundred million dollars in real estate. Like I can't be like writing the copy and doing the hashtags and doing all that stuff. Like we're here to like build your brand on social and take it to that next level. Um, so, but you, you gotta have the mindset. And that's why I wanted to bring Lance on um, just because like he talks to agents all day long. Like, and, and I, you know, I, I've almost like turned him into like really pro social media because before that I think he got it but now he's like actually like reaping the benefits and he's seeing like how you know how he can mind share with his his uh followers yeah and Ryan just to make one thing super clear when I say I turn 100% over I mean like all the back end stuff that I'm not an expert at right so like the fact that you all came to me and said now tell me all these different parts about you right? To help me create that better story and then craft that around. So like my meeting with my, you know, social manager is awesome because once a month I sit down myself with this person and we talk collaboratively about all that stuff. So no, I don't like hand all that. Thank you for pointing that out. I'm going to hand that all off and be like, you guys decide what photo to put up. Like, no, but it is such a benefit to me though, to be able to understand that I don't need to be an expert in something, right? That I have a partnership in something that allows this to, uh, to, to make, um, to make me more comfortable in the parts that I really do, which is like growing out to people and stuff like that. So, I mean, that, that's why it was really helpful for me. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so Jeff, anything to add before I should, uh, I can get into yeah. our packages. One quick thing too. And I will mention that, you know, and Lance mentioned it that about how much I post, I know that I'm an anomaly and I know that most of you listening are not going to be like that. I I enjoy social media. I enjoy 
creating content. I enjoy sharing my life. If you don't feel the same way, this is exactly why you need these platforms. I use it complimentary. Uh, Lance uses it all in, right? So it's to there's different ways to use it, but it just goes to show you it's good for both. Uh, and so, you know, that's, I just wanted to add that because I think it's important for everyone to know because I know very few people share in my passion for social media just because it's not their thing. Um, and so this is exactly why the very socials of the world and I got connected in the first place. And but also, Jeff, just to just sorry to butt in, like, yeah, yeah, like I totally agree with you. Social media is it's a complementary to your marketing mix. I'm not just doing social media. I'm doing mailers. I'm doing email newsletters. You know, I'm making my phone calls like, but the social media, I think is like the icing on the cake. Cause it's like my, it's like my overall brand. It's for me to mind share with my sphere um, about like what my hobbies are, like why they should be working with me, what my success stories are. So it can't, you can't just be doing social media. Like if you really want to be successful in real estate, like you need to be doing it all and you need to be excellent, excellent at social media. And if you're doing big business and you're doing, I would be shocked if you're doing your own social media. Like I would just be shocked. I don't know how you would have the time. Um, you know, I think when you get really good at and become an expert in, in real estate, like, you know, you're, you kind of like create the content where you're good at. And then you, you know, there's so much detail that go into actually creating a, a good page. Like this is something that you should outsource. Like I'm all for, you know, and I, lo I, I actually have a, um, a debate with do it yourself or hire an agency, um, which I think both are great, but I think the overall mindset of both those two is that you should be active on, on, on social. And I'm not, you know, I'm all for do it yourself, but I'm also, you know, a businessman and I believe in delegating. And I think if you have an agency that's going to help you take your social to the next level, like we're the agency for real estate agents. So kind of getting into our packages, get seen, get noticed, get attention. Um, uh, what we'll do is we'll manage all your social media. We'll do all the posting. We don't post anything without your approval. We do monthly audits. We go over to what's working, what's not working, and really give you strategy on like what you should be creating content on. Um, and then what we'll do is the way that it differs is between the amount of posts. There's 12, 16, and 20 in-feed Instagram stories and hours of manual engagement. What we'll do is we'll actually go from your page and we'll engage with certain hashtags, geotags, and popular pages. And um, we'll manually engage. So you'll get followers organically in your target market. For example, um, let's say Cipriani's is a really popular restaurant. Like we would go down Cipriani's and we would say, oh, it's my favorite restaurant. Can't wait to go next week. Or some, like, let's say um, Midtown Mansion. You know, we would go down that hashtag and be like, beautiful home. And so then they would go to your page, they would see that beautiful grid that we put together and they would follow you. So, um, you know, these are our packages. We're also giving a free reel out today. Just reach out, we'll, we'll work with you because video is the future for Instagram. Um, that's really it for the-, it's the future, Ryan. It's the now. So yeah. get, get with it. And, totally. and Ryan, I, Ryan I, I wouldn't be me if I didn't point out one really quick thing was you're talking about the difference between a social media coach and a social media company like yours. You know, ask any real estate agent this. If you want to do an AB comparison, check this out. If I offered you a way to actually coach you through the 50 or 60 or 70 things that you do all day long in your business, or for the exact same amount of money, I offered you an assistant to take half of that stuff off your plate, which one would you pick? assistant all day long like why well, i don't even know why this is a conversation <laughs> like this is again the simplest form of us doing what we do best and rehumanizing our relationships to the people that grow our business is knowing when to delegate things the best people in the world at business are master delegators period definitely it's no different it's no different than hiring a transaction coordinator do you like do you like doing paperwork most say no. Therefore, you hire a transaction. We're coordinator. salespeople. We want to be out and about. I mean, that's why it's like, take the pictures, create the content. We'll tell you kind of like what the trends are. Give it to us. Let us do all the posts. Well, you know? that's, that's, it, why, that's why I say that if you're passionate about it, it, what are you passionate about? If you're passionate about social media, then by all means, do it like I do it. But even then, look at me. I still hire very social to, to complement what I'm doing. The, the thing I will say, Ryan, you mentioned in the beginning that your team's going to do 100 million this year. My team's going to do over over 500 million. 
Uh, I've, I've hired over 100 people over the last two years. Why? Video and social media, 1 million percent. I have two partners and we've grown as a result of that. If you ask them, they said, man, why have you guys grown so much? They'll say Jeff's social media presence, period. That's it. That's it. I mean, it's, it's so freaking powerful. And that's why I'm so passionate about it. That's why I like doing these interviews, because it's, you know, anytime I can feed the feed the noggin and, and I'm, you can never learn enough. Like I even look at Gary Vee, man, the guy's the godfather of this stuff. And he's constantly, constantly consuming and putting it out and creating and learning. And that's what we all need to be doing. So again, I applaud you. I said this in the beginning. I applaud you guys who are on today. I applaud you. If you watch this on Facebook, I applaud you. If you watch the, uh, the recording, take Ryan up on what he's giving away today. Uh, I noticed some of you put your emails in the chat, Ryan, correct me if I'm wrong. They need to click the link and put their information there, correct? Yeah, or go to my website and just uh, send me an email. Um, that would probably be the best just because I think this was, you know, well, we, that would probably be the best way just so we make sure that we can connect with, with each other. So uh, we'll have, we'll have uh, Jake, Jake, if you could repost the link in the chat, but there's a few questions I wanted to, to get to real quick that, that were asked. Uh, so let's, let's, let me ask those to you. Um, the first ones uh, that I want to address, because I'm, I'm probably the one to answer this one, for luxury real estate, is TikTok still good to use or is it more for a younger audience? Let me give you a great example. If you guys ever heard of Brad McCallum, uh, Brad is a, a agent in Calgary, Alberta, uh, a, one of the best video realtors on the planet. Um, again, Brad McCallum, M-C-C-A-L-L-U-M. Go follow him. Go check him out. He was out. on my last webinar, Jeff. Dude, okay, so you know Brad. Yeah. Um, he's got a story and, and believe me, he's one of, so I'm a big TikToker and I'm a guy who's been an advocate for TikTok when everybody was calling me an idiot. People are finally starting to embrace it. He had a TikTok up on a $3 million listing. The son of a well-known jeweler in his market saw it, showed it to dad. Dad said, I want to go see this house. Dad goes and sees the house. Turns out he knows the seller. Now he's buying the house. Oh, and guess what? The jeweler needs to sell his multi-million dollar house too, all because of a TikTok share. You cannot be too many places. The, the audience is not too young because that's the thing. A, a teenager might see it, share it with mom or dad, and you just gain, Brad gained himself five or six million dollars in sales. I mean, who, who, who does that? I also think like the procrastination, because you're right, you, everyone was calling, we've been talking, we've been talking, doing these webinars for a year, and we've been talking TikTok and webinar, or um, TikTok and video, and, and now it's like, okay, TikTok's in, it's like, get, get in and start going all in on social media now, because if you wait another year, you're just going to be that much farther behind, and other agents are going to be doing it, and it's like, you just, this is now and you should not be waiting this should be part of your marketing mix your marketing strategy you know just just like you know advertising on billboards or mailers like social media is number one yep travis uh, if you're still here i know you personally just send me a message i'll answer your question because really that was more applicable to facebook than it is to instagram um so i'm going to jump down so just message me i'll help you there and if and if you want ryan or lance's opinion because you know me uh, feel free to DM them on that one, but I'm going to, I'm going to pass you because I know you. Uh, Judy says, this is a good question. What if you are single, have no kids, no pets? I am missing a lot of opportunities for fun. Uh, I guess I have a boring life unless I am traveling. And I, I love to answer this question, uh, but I'm going to let you guys answer this first when it comes to content for somebody like this. If I'm single, I'm out every night. I'm, I think that anybody who's having a problem coming up with content, you're a real estate agent in a city. Like, you're all, obviously you're passionate about your city, create content about your community. Yeah. And I, I sort of already addressed this one too, that with the chocolate idea, like we all have things that we love that have nothing to do with real estate. Those things that you love, other people love too. That's the commonality that we all share. So there's nothing wrong about the taking things that you really are passionate about in your life that don't have anything to do with real estate and leverage those as well. Remember, Judy, you're not boring. Uh, if you're into gardening, which you might feel like is boring, or you're into reading, or you're into watching Netflix, that might sound boring, but there is a lot of people on the other end that are into the exact same thing that you are. So let's just say you're that person who is uh, the person who spends a lot of their free time watching Netflix. Bingo. There's there's one of your pillars of content. Start I doing reviews about on the shows. Grand Banks TV show the other day. I got like 10 DMs because of it. I it mean. doesn't matter what you're into. You're into golf. You're into 
you know, botany, you're, it doesn't matter. You're into something. I promise. Here's the, here's what I can guarantee. You don't sit in your house and stare at a wall. You do something you do. You have hobbies. That's your content pillar, create content around it. You're going to find maybe five, 50, 500 people resonate with you and like you more as a result of it. And all of a sudden you start showing up more on their feed because they're engaging your stuff because they, they share in the same commonality. You guys, I mean, Lance said it exactly right with the chocolate analogy. Good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, I don't see any other questions. So check the chat. If you haven't already clicked that link, it's www.verysocialnyc.com. Also, I would say follow Lance on Instagram because as realtors, I he's got every week, he's got the most insightful tips. Like I'm always taking them. Lance, what's your IG? Uh, it's Lancelot Pendleton, and um, you can also, um, I, I got a separate group that I work with called goodsphere.coach. Um, if you want to go to the website, goodsphere.coach, I help them with their programming. Um, don't worry, that says compass stuff on it, but uh, go ahead and fill out that form because we'd love to chat with you about some of the great ways that you can figure out how to rehumanize those relationships and leverage parts of this with social media and your business on the whole too. Love it. Yeah, go follow these guys because here's the deal, people. Remember what we said during this webinar, don't reinvent the wheel. You don't have to. You can, I, I, you know how much stuff of Tristan's that I have shared over the years that has helped position myself as the authority because I'm using Tristan's expertise. This isn't rocket science, folks. People remember who shared it. They don't, they, they're not reaching out to Tristan. They're reaching out to me. So go follow Ryan, go follow no, Lance. Someone and, should do a bagel review and tag me. I'll be so happy. You right? <laughs> you know what? Done, done, Ryan. I'm gonna do it. Jeff, please. Are you gonna find a? Is there a good bagel shop in Missouri? Probably not. I <laughs> <laughs> oh, love it, man. All right, guys. Well, thank you very much. We're we're, yes. uh, we're wrapped on time. Hey, re remember and, and reach out to these guys. Remember, we're talking about Instagram. It's a great platform to DM and connect. Send these guys messages. If nothing else, just say thanks for the good information today. Because here's what I promise you: they will reply. Because if they don't, man, I will come find them and <laughs> beat them. All right, fellas. Thanks. Good stuff. Thanks, Thanks guys. Great talking.